So when I was in university, I had to do an internship and even though I was studying something completely unrelated, I decided to work at a small mobile game development studio. When I was working there, I had a chat with the lead game designer and asked for his advice on making my own video game. And I'll never forget the sage wisdom he shared with me. Your first game is gonna suck. And that's okay. At the time, I didn't know what to say. A part of me wanted it to not be true, because I knew I'd feel pretty embarrassed to make something that I wasn't proud of. But at the same time, it made a lot of sense. I've never made a game. What skills and experience do I have to actually make something good? So I decided to make something that sucks, and be proud of it anyway. I hope my tale will entertain you, but more than that, if you've been thinking of making your own game, then maybe my story will be the motivation that helps you start. A sort of realistic view of what to expect at ground zero, so you're not too hard on yourself and maybe can learn something from my experience. Without further ado, let's start at the beginning. From the get-go, I knew that programming would be the biggest hurdle. At the time, I'd never written a line of code in my life, and I could make little sense of the Unity interface. So step one was learning the basics of programming. The wisdom I gleaned online was that you'll want to start with absolute basics, like how to start a new project, what is the camera, and all of the other features that will be there for whatever kind of game you make. But you don't want to get stuck in tutorial hell, where you go through a ton of tutorials, but at the end of the day, you're learning a lot of stuff that isn't relevant to what you want to make. What did I want to make? I decided to not be too ambitious for my first project, and take one of the games that the tutorials taught me and put a spin on it. That way I wouldn't have to figure out everything from the ground up. And so I began learning and shopping around for an idea. Something that I thought was simple enough, kind of interesting, that I could build on. Eventually, I did find something, which I'll show you in a bit. But first, a montage of all the other projects I completed. I'll include links to the tutorials in the description. So now that I'm clearly a coding genius, this is meant to read sarcastically by the way, I settled on this game to build on. The original video that taught me how to make it is by Charger Games. I highly recommend his videos if you're starting out, since the projects are quick and easy to follow. The idea here is that you move your character around and collide with these carrots to eat them. Simple enough, but I wanted to add my own twist. For my first version, I wanted to add a timer to add some pressure which would hopefully make the game more exciting another type of food that would be a kind of obstacle to the carrots and make the player sick when eaten. Lastly, a food spawning system, so the game would play a little differently every time, adding a little replay value. After I figured out what features I wanted to add, the next step was to find tutorials that would teach me how to program these things. At this stage, I was struggling, like really struggling, and I turned to the dark arts, ChatGPT. I'll talk more about this in a bit because it was a controversial choice. That aside, this is what the game was looking like now. Ugly, but working like I wanted it to. Be right back, just gotta draw some cute assets and <laughs> Now it's looking a lot better. Just don't peek under the hood. At this point, I felt the game was slightly more interesting than the base game, but it still needed something more. But I knew these kinds of thoughts were the devil's whispers in the game dev world. There's always more that could be done. So I promised myself I would only add what could be done in a week and no more. On that list was a start screen and tutorial menu, dynamic movement speed, which would get faster as you ate more good food and would reset to the base speed when you ate a vegetable, a star system, so that instead of winning the game immediately when you fill the bar, you'll earn a star, with three stars being the maximum. That way I could balance the game to be harder overall since things were feeling too easy. And of course, the game needed some sound effects and music. With my shopping list in hand and my blood sacrifice ready, I consulted again with ChatGPT to get all of this done. And this is how the final game turned out.
In the end, I couldn't get everything I wanted to in the game. It wasn't just a time constraint, but I just couldn't figure out how to do some of these things. No matter how I tried to work it out with ChatGPT and other tutorials I found online. I wanted a sound effect to play when you press the buttons, or when you ate food and got sick. But somehow when I got one sound to work, the others stopped. So in the end, I decided the background music was the most important to keep. This slots in nicely to talking about the pros and cons of using ChatGPT. The pro for sure was that I could get answers to what I was looking for pretty easily most of the time. I could even copy in my existing scripts to help give ChatGPT some context to what I was trying to make. And ChatGPT could build on the existing scripts I already had as long as I copied them all into the conversation. But the downside for sure was that I honestly wasn't learning much about coding. Sure, ChatGPT would explain what was going on in the code on a high level, and I could ask further questions on stuff I didn't quite get. But something about just copy-pasting the code didn't commit any of it to my long-term memory, so I can't honestly say I got any better at coding by using this method. Another thing is that ChatGPT doesn't know everything. Duh. I went in circles with ChatGPT trying different methods to implement the audio features I was talking about before, and detailed really specifically the problems I was running into. But after spending hours and hours working on it, ChatGPT would just keep giving me the same responses, even though I told it I'd followed the instructions to a T. It seemed ChatGPT was also at a loss and getting kinda tired of it. The biggest elephant in the room though, was that the game kind of didn't have a point. It didn't have an overarching game loop that made you feel like you were working towards something worthwhile, like earning coins that you could use to upgrade your virtual house or feed your virtual pet, which I get, that would blow up the scope, which isn't what I wanted either. But it also wasn't addictively fun like Flappy Bird or other games that are mechanically simple, but very effective, no matter how I tried to balance the timer, move speed, points, etc. So what was it all for? In the end, I didn't even publish the game. I shared it with a couple of people I'm close to just for the laughs, but was that really it? Kinda. But I did learn a few things. Back again to when I was interning. One of the other questions I asked the game designer was, do I need to have a background in programming to be a good game designer? He himself knows how to code and was a programmer before he became a game designer. His answer was, no, you just need to know how programmers work and how to work with them. At the time, I was super confused. It made sense. You have programmers on your team. Surely you'll need to know how they work. But at the same time, it also made no sense. What does it mean to know how programmers work? How could you know that short of knowing how to code yourself? After trying to program my own game and write some code, his words have finally clicked. By trying to program my own game, I learned how to break down a game idea into a list of its most basic features. I know what variables, game objects, and scenes are, different types of controls, how to navigate the editor, good script management so that it's easier to find bugs and make changes without having to go through hundreds if not thousands of lines of code. If I'm honest with myself, I don't have the passion for programming, and I don't see myself continuing to learn it deeply. But if I do decide to keep making games and find myself enlisting the help of a programmer, I hope this experience will help me be a good client. From a design perspective, I also learned more about the kind of games I like to make. I don't find movement or action-oriented mechanics very interesting. I honestly had the most fun coming up with a story on the back end with the designs and visuals for the game. So maybe going forward, I'll stick to more narratively focused concepts and maybe dabble with using some Unity extensions that don't need me to know how to code. That being said, even though the first game I made sucks, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. There were frustrating moments, but they made completing the game that much sweeter. That's all I wanted to share. Thanks for watching, and good luck with whatever you're working on.